Hello! In this video, I will provide an introduction to fundamentals of industrial robot programming. The aims of the presentation are, on the one hand, to know different programming methods of industrial robots, as well as different programming levels that are conceptually established. In addition to this, I will mention main programming languages of industrial robots so you can get familiar with main manufacturing names and their programming languages. Finally, I will describe a set of operations that typically must be performed in pick-and-place operations or mechanization trajectories. Here I show some robot programming methods. Offline programming is carried out by computer software in which all robot movements to perform are sp specified with a previous computer task on a computer. Once the program is verified using a simulation tool, it is transferred to the robot controller to run it. On the other hand, in inline programming, an engineer manually moves the robot using the robot control path and records positions of interest and configures the corresponding motion instructions to achieve the required task. So, at the end of all this process, the robot will have a code that will be able to reproduce as many times as, re as required. Collaborative robots provide a third method for programming a robot based on the teaching mode. In this case, we can use the robot or we can drag the robot to a desired position by exerting a force on the robot arm and the robot will be able to remember those positions for later reproduction. Conceptually, we will distinguish between three different priming levels. On the one side, robot priming level is a set of instructions that allows the robot to move and execute all possible uh, instructions um, indicating the robot motion, speed, the kind of tool, etc. In the images show, the robot is performing a spot welding operation with some pre-program instructions. On the other hand, object programming level is conceptually understood as a set of motion primitives that allow the robot to work with a specific objects. Such primitives can be adapted to different speeds, position, etc. But the inner set of instructions to execute basically remain the same because are the appropriate for that object. Here I show an image of a robot picking objects of different sizes that represents the kind of operations that can be implemented with some motion primitives. Last, the task programming level is conceptually representing the set of motions that make the robot perform a specific task, usually considering more complex aspects such as reaching a goal free of collision. In the last image, we can see a robot that is trying to pick an object, while the task that has been computed includes a collision object avoidance method, so it does not collide with the other object. Each robot manufacturer has in its own uh, programming language. This means that there's no standardization in this regard, although all the languages have common elements such as instructions for coordinated and uncoordinated movement of robot joints, definition of robot configurations, maximum speeds and accelerations, admissible accuracy, etc. Here I show the names of main robot manufacturers and their corresponding language names. ABB uses RAPID, QCA uses KRL, Komao uses PDL2, Kasawa uses INFORM, Kawasaki uses AS, Fanuc uses KRL, Stubbly uses VAL3, and Universal Robots uses UR Script. As you can see, this makes basically impossible to explain all of them. So, anyway, you don't need to, uh, or doesn't make too much sense to explain all of them because you might never use a specific robot brand. So for this reason, we will focus on rapid language in other videos, which is one of the most used languages. And once you know the basics, learning other languages will pose no challenge for you. I would also like to mention the existence of ROS Industrial. Here I label it as language for general purpose, but in reality it is a consortium, or it can be seen as a consortium of industrial partners that offer services for developers of advanced industrial robotic applications. Specifically, it offers a common interface for the vast majority of industrial robots, which simplifies the development. It has a repository with open source licenses without 
commercial use restrictions. In addition, it has tools for priming robots at the task level, offering optimal collision-free routes that adapt the trajectory to the tool and the environment. In general, all robot priming languages will include a set of instructions that will allow you to define robot configurations, set different coding frames as well as the type of tool. They have movement instructions to control robot's joints with coordinated and non-coordinated movements, let's say to, for, to perform linear or circular movements, and you can set the maximum admissible speed, acceleration and accuracy. You can also read digital inputs or activate digital outputs connected to the robot controller. Of course, you can control the flow of your program using conventional loop instructions, conditional jumps, weights, routing calls. You can also store information in variables, manage files, and perform some simple arithmetic operations. In addition to this, many languages have specific commands designed by each manufacturer that allow you to perform more specific instructions or, or tasks to adjust, let's say, internal control parameters. Robots can adopt multiple configurations to achieve a given position or an orientation. Specifically, robots with six degrees of freedom could reach up, up to eight possible configurations for the same position and orientation as shown. Configurations in the first row are elbow up configurations, while configurations in the bottom row are elbow down configurations. Specifically, for this robot, joints one, four, and six can adopt two possible configurations each, resulting in a total of eight possible combinations for those three joints. The importance of knowing these configurations lies in the fact that some of them may collide with objects in the environment, while others may not. In addition, some are closer to joint limits, which implies that they have little margin for maneuvering and are generally avoided unless necessary. By specifying waypoints of a trajectory, we can indicate if the points are stop points or non-stopping points. The resulting trajectory will be different depending on how we configure these waypoints. If you specify stop points, the robot must reach those, those points by preserving the correct position and orientation and the velocity will be generally zero. While if you define non-stopping points, the actual robot trajectory will be approximated and the velocity will be kept constant. This is particularly relevant if the tool changes the orientation as shown. For non-stopping points, many languages define an admissible accuracy zone where the actual robot trajectory must lie. Therefore, we cannot expect to pass through the program position in a non-stopping point. Here I show a sequence of operations that we will typically perform in pick-and-place operations. Normally, we will have to go to a position at a certain height from the object. This movement can be carried out with a coordinated or uncoordinated movement and it will generally carry out at a, at a, at a, a fast speed. Once the point is reached, we will make an approach path to the object, grip the object and then perform an evacuation maneuver to the original position. This is normally done at the medium speed for the approach and slow speed for the evacuation because we have already gripped the object. Then we will move to another place using a coordinated motion at a slow speed and then perform another approach evacuation maneuver to release the object. Once the place operation has been completed, then you can move to a different position, let's say at a higher speed. The mechanization trajectories also have approach and evacuation maneuvers as in the previous example. Usually, at a medium or low speed again. But the main difference is that during mechanization trajectory, we will now create or, or perform linear or circular coordinated movements to follow the profile of uh, the trajectory we want at a slow speed. And the speed will depend basically on the tool used and we should uh, attend to uh, tools manufacturer recommendations for that speed. 
the tool will start rotating just before uh, we reach the first approximating position and will stop once we perform the last evacuation maneuver. Points of the trajectory can be stop points or non stopping points as appropriate, depending on what we want. In this presentation, I have made a first general introduction to industrial robot programming. In the next video, I will introduce you to ABB's Rapid Programming Language. Thank you very much.